welcome to another D3 tutorial, and also welcome to the new school year for the uh, college students out there for the new semester. This will be a, this will be the spring semester, and to honor that, I will be creating a bamboo tablet pen, as you see here for this tutorial. So I'm just gonna save this pen as an image. Let's head into Cinema 40, and we can hit Front, Options, Configure, Back, this tab right here, the three little dots, and find our image. There it is. So the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to first start with a spline. So let's go to Loft. And let's pick a circle. Well, I guess this is not a spline. This is a, I guess, going off the geometry of these circles. I'm going to pick the circle on the Z, Y axis to match this picture. It may be different for yours. I'm going to scale this and throw it down over here. Zoom into the white on white. It's a little hard to see. A little bit better. I'm going to go back to my display here and I'm going to offset the Y axis to move it relatively in the middle. So when I change there we go. I drop the circle underneath the loft as a child of. I will grab the circle, hold control, click and drag to this new point. You can see where the uh, the actual mesh change into whoever modeled this for uh, Wacom. Do you see that? This this uh this is an error in their uh um and their model unless the tip is actually flat which i'm looking at one as i speak right now i have two pens actually because i broke one of my other tablets by accident as i search for the secondary pen it's not relatively in sight so i can't the other one is slightly bigger should fit this size, but oh well. Moving on. So uh, I think that's a error in whoever modeled this. So I'm just gonna scale this up. There's this isn't round enough, so I'm gonna scale that down to about halfway. I'll zoom in here. And I'm gonna move it over. Scale it back up. Scale that up. Then scale that outward like that. There you go. You may want to do a no another bevel right here. Taking this and going out just a little bit. Move that over here. Just a little bit smaller. Is that a nice round edge? I don't. This it this didn't come out good. And you try to fix that. Scaling it. A little dip right there. And then go straight to all the way to the other side. Just like that. I'm gonna zoom in here. Looks like you can see where the end of their uh, their model mesh goes right here. And then I'm going to 
Put a second one here. I'm still holding control. The shift when I move. And not only when I'm well yeah, only when I move. I'm going to stay this in place, control, click and drag. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Let's check out this view. I'm going to move it. Like this. Scale it to make sure it doesn't touch this. Continue to move it back in here. And I'm going to act like this is a, a mini pen. I'm going to come in slightly. Scale it again. And come out where it's hopefully matching this. My model wasn't perfectly uh, centered, so my bottom is off slightly. But I'm going to continue this top one and continue this all the way through. I'm going to stop right here. Although it doesn't really matter. Let's create that one polygon just in case I mess up in the future. Stop here. There's also a, uh, they're using a really zoomed in focal length, a extreme telephoto, but there's still a, uh, a warp right here, you can see that. And that's how you can tell. If it was flat on, it would be flat just like this. But they must be using a telephoto lens that has a slight perspective. So that's why this is angled slightly. Just in case you were wondering. I'm going to zoom in slightly. Over, just like that. Come up, back to kind of that original size. If it's close enough, it may not be able to tell. There's a little bit of a glossier part. Maybe it comes here, planning for the future, fills in. Very slightly. Comes out. Comes down. I'm just going to continue the process. I'm going to shovel that one in. Move it very slightly. One back up to the original height. That one down. Shrinking this slower and slower. Create those different. I'm going to push this forward a little bit. I know it doesn't match here, but matches kind of down here. Shrink that down. Forward again. Way too much. Lift that back up. The original height. That back down. Nope. See that angle. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit. Make that. I'm looking at mine. And maybe just a slight lip in. Come over here. We can scale that one down. Scale it again. I'll move it forward slightly. Scale it back up. Push it back over here. Scale it to that size. Scale it inwards. And push that out just to create a small bevel. Just 
just gonna push that out just so I can see the size of it. Oops. Drop that in. It's gonna be my nub. Get a little bit bigger. I'm gonna bring that back. Extrude inwards, actually. Extrude in and then in again. So this isn't too extreme. Let's make this a little bit smaller. And then extrude out. Out here, extrude out again. Make that significantly smaller. And then we can round off this point. Creating a little bevel. That off again. Here's our pen, as you can see right now. Yeah, they came out pretty nice. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay. Zoom up. And let's try to model this. Uh, this part rounds off and tapers, and this part is flat. So if we used a extrude and just put an extra segment into here, this should round off because if we put it under a hypernerve and everything else, this top should be relatively flat. So I'm not sure what this actually look, lo looks like, but I'm gonna halfway fake it. Let's do a Bezier. Do right this. Have it come down here. I'm gonna have it go through the model. Like this. Fix those points a little bit later. Okay. I'm going to hit, ooh, I forgot the name, but, um, <clears throat> that one's okay. This one may be just that. I'm going to drop down this a little bit. Oh, that looks, that looks fine. This needs to be, I'm going to right click, soft intersection. Drop that down and zoom in. Lost the way that's supposed to look. That's because, let's delete this. Oh. Holding shift to move that alone. It's two right there. Let's check the other side. I had two as well. One was slightly like that, so let's move that this way. This is going to be inside the mesh, so we won't see it anyway. Move that. That's good enough. So I will throw down a extrude on this. If I can put it under. Just like that. We can, actually that, that seems to be a relatively good size. I'm just gonna eyeball it with our model. Pull or click C on the keypad to make that editable. I'm gonna highlight everything. Connect objects, just in case there's caps. I'm going to hit my rectangle selection tool. 
Click off only visible elements, highlight everything, right click, optimize. That was quick. I will now go to mesh, create tools, knife. I'm going to hit visible off, visible only off. I'm gonna hold it right here, hold shift, click and drag. That just created a angle all the way through. You can see that. So if I put it under a hypernerb, let's test this. That happens. Great Angons, Clark. Nope. Uh, did we screw it up? We may have to. Go to this view. I'm gonna hold shift with the knife tool. Cut all the way through. Cut all the way through. Add some more geometry. Putting a little bit of a deformation right here. Turn the limit. Change that. That means we need a uh, slightly more geometry in this. Could have faked that by going, I'm going to go undo a bunch of times. I'm going to test one of the extrudes out. Extrude five. I'm going to copy and paste that, make this one editable. Do the uh, same thing. Hide that just in case I mess up again. Unfortunately, it happened in the tutorial. Do select a uh, polygon selection. Grab this. Gonna move it over. Oop. Our caps aren't connected, so optimize this. And let's try this again. There it is. Now move that. Now I'm just going to hold in control, just make a bunch of segments. Just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to stick that under the hypernerve to see what it looks like. Add our geometry this way. There's our knife tool. I'm going to cut geometry in it. There we go. Yeah, one of every single line right here. Test subject. Not, you may have to model it from a cube. That under, came out a little bit better. Bump the subdivisions up. This is still getting deformed. I hope it's not the thong. Hmm. I'm not sure why that's happening. What if we had a bevel onto this?
Uh, must be because it's not that. Huh. It's acting like it's not connected. Current state to object. Interesting. That might be able to work if we just put the uh, the bevel on. We can change the bevel to subdivisions. Let's bump up the subdivisions. We can pick the size. Pretty squared anyway. That we can use that for the top. I'm going to model. I'm gonna bump that into the middle check all right it is passing through that's pretty much our model for the pen render this out it looks okay We have to do the, uh, oops, the logo as well. You can find that just by putting a, uh, find the actual font of bamboo, or you can go to the website, find a HD image of their logo, make it a path, illustrate a path, and just stick it right on. We're going to finish this off by creating this right here, which is just a tube. X to extrude, nope, plus Z, Z would work. Let's make this circle that size, roughly. Our pen's slightly different too, so we gotta take that into consideration. 15's gonna work. I have this to 16. It's a little thick. Let's do 15.5. Uh, Let's check our image right here. Yep. I'm gonna make that editable. Points. I'll select all the points, optimize that. I'm going to select all the polygons, about half of it, a little bit more. Control, click and drag. Do that to the end. Create our model tool. I'm going to just move it so it just passes through. That's good enough. Let's throw down a boolean on top of that. This one. Boolean under... Dude. Oh, that's a child of... some reason that is not working. We are having issues in this tutorial. Oh, because it's not the loft. I have to stick with the loft in there. That would do it. Then there's that right here. I'm going to put angle limit on our spline. 60. Or 30. 
We have a little bit of a mesh deformation here. Because the poly isn't high isn't high enough and it doesn't match. Sixty. Might have to put a hypernerb over top of the loft. And drop that in. Yep, and that got rid of it right away. And that should make everything else extremely smooth. Looks the same. Do a little curve right here. And this can be a texture. I'm not sh I don't think it actually moves in or out. I believe that just texture. If you want to make a circle, you can make a boolean. And then you can change that to a little bit of a darker black. That would work. We can add our color. Go to color, texture, noise. So really, let's just pick a really dark and a slightly dark, dark. Bring these closer together. We can add a reflectance onto that. There is a specular. We can add a Beckman. A little bit of reflection, but a roughness all the way up. Just so it cuts through. So it kind of looks like this material. Drop that under our pool. Let me get that color. We can also drop the same texture over our pen cap. Now, of course, these are different colors. So we're going to have to pick the loft, go into our um, polygon selection. Can we select off this? Now we may have to make the uh, this editable, so one geometry. So I'm going to take this out of the pool. A lot of polygons. Connect objects to delete. Throw that back under. Wait for this to process. Might have broke it because of the boolean. You can drop the subdivisions down. What if we just create this as an object? I'll just delete that under the boolean. Then we have this. Although, we can pick the uh, hypernerve after. I believe if we still put it under, it still looks the same see that there. Alright, so our loft. We can go to our selection tool. Loop selection. And I'm just going to look at this. I'm going to box. So we got a shiny part here, it looks like. Zoom back out. So we got shiny, rough. This may be shiny. I'm not sure what this one is. So let's do this one first. Oops. It's going to select all these points. Holding shift. 
select, select, select. Rotate slightly just to get underneath this. Rotate again slightly just underneath that. There we go. I'm going to copy and paste this texture. I'm going to double click it. I'm just going to get rid of the roughness. All right? And just add that right there. Do the same thing to this section. Click, then hold shift. Click all these points. Drop that under. It looks like this part is a little bit rough. And then this is rough. Our pen is smoother texture. Maybe an easier way to do this. As in Drop that under. Just like that. Yeah, those are two different ones. Just confirming. And what color is our... That's yeah, relatively the same. I want to leave the logo out. There's our Wacom pen. You can throw it. Looks like light's coming from the top, so we can jump up this... Um, disc, throw down a luminance, you can raise that up, get our reference photo, and it's a white background. Oh, there's a, uh, a reflective material down here too. Let's, uh, go to cinema. Duplicate this. We can both put a compositing tag on it. Seen by camera off. I'm going to duplicate this luminance channel. And I'm just going to make a color. So this reflective light. Not that much reflective light. Quick render. Make sure the camera does not see them. Edit render settings. Throw some GI under this. Some A on GI. Just put it in physical render just because. Render this out. That's okay. We can do a white background. Background. Wait. For object, you want, you may want this to be closer. You might have to bump the strength up on that. Hmm. And now the tricky part is rendering this out. And make it have this nice reflective top right here. This may have a Fresnel. That might be what it is because it gets darker near the edges right here. That is made with a Fresnel shader. But uh, that's the model of the pen. And uh, thanks for watching.
for the kids at school. Good luck with school. And I'll catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. And thanks for around, or thanks for uh, sticking around to the end. This is uh, how it came out. Not that bad. It is definitely a Wacom pen. Thanks for watching, and uh, again, good luck at school.